In this video, we will discuss how to represent positive integers in hexadecimal. As mentioned previously, there are three base number systems you need to be aware of for the exam. Now, base 2 binary and base 10 denary or decimal have been covered in a previous video. So this video is going to focus on base 16, hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is a base 16 number system, and it follows exactly the same principles as the other number systems we've just been looking at. The only difference is with hex, we have 16 unique digits. Now, this obviously presents us with a bit of a unique problem. What do we use to represent the hex digits 10 to 15? We can't simply use our decimal numbers 1, 0 for 10 or 1, 5 for 15, as these are two digits stuck together. Well, we simply choose to replace digits 10 to 15 with the alphabetic letters A through F. So in hex, we have 16 unique digits representing 0 to 15, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and then A representing 10 from decimal through to 15 for F. So let's just summarize and recap those three base number systems and look at them all side by side, counting up from zero. So in the left column, we have base 10 denary, followed by base 16 hexadecimal, followed by base two binary. So all those number systems can represent the number zero in a single digit, and they can all represent one with a single digit. Of course, as soon as we get to two, we can represent a two in base 10, that's fine, and also in hex. But in binary, we've now run out of unique digits. We only have a zero and a one available. We now have to combine those zeros and ones as shown earlier in order to represent the deanery value 10. We can proceed in a likewise fashion all the way up until we reach the deanery value 9. Now, of course, after that, we don't have a single digit in the deanery system anymore for representing the digit 10. So we have to combine digits. And again, in hex, we now have to do something special as described earlier, and we have to switch to using letters because hex allows us to represent values above 10 in deanery in a single digit. So in deanery, we have one zero or 10. In hex, we have A and in binary, we have one zero, one zero. This continues all the way up to the deanery value 15, which is the hex equivalent F and the binary equivalent 1111. Of course, we can carry on going above that. And as soon as we do, hex no longer has a single digit which can represent a value. So we'd now have to start combining values just like we have been in deanery and binary. So computers don't really use hexadecimal, but because of the close relationship between hexadecimal and a binary nibble, they become really useful for representing large binary numbers in a smaller number of digits. And they're used in computer science to represent colors, memory addresses, MAC addresses, and much, much more. So just spend a few moments exploring this table and you'll see what I mean by the close relationship between binary nibbles and hexadecimal. With hexadecimal, there are 16 numbers, 16 possible permutations from 0 to 15. And we can represent the numbers 0 to 15 in binary using four bits from 0, 0, 0, 0 through to 1, 1, 1, 1.
This of course means we can represent long sequences of binary numbers in a much more compact and human friendly way. Here's the typical examples from the screenshots we've been using earlier. If we look at the physical address or what's known as the MAC address, we can see it's a sequence of six hexadecimal pairs. If we were to write that out in binary, it'd be quite a long convoluted number. Likewise, it's quite common to represent 24 bit colors using a group of six hexadecimal digits. And again, it's much easier to represent these colors in hex because binary would be a much longer sequence of digits. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How can we use hexadecimal to represent positive integers? And how does hexadecimal help us when representing large binary numbers? So that's everything you need to know for the exam, so you can pop your pen down. But if you've got an extra 30 seconds, we're going to go over a couple of other interesting points about other base number systems. You now have all the tools you need to convert from one base number system to another. And although base 2, 10 and 16 are all you need to know for the exam, many other systems have been used throughout history. Around the 15th century, for example, the Mayans used a base 20 number system. And in 3100 BC, the Babylonians were using a base 60 number system.